When the time came for me to go to college, my mother decided she would go with me. <laughs> Since the college was 1,500 miles away in the Midwest, and since I was very young to be going to college, it seemed to her the proper thing to do. My mother pretended there was nothing strange about her taking me to college. She told me I should wait and I would see that every other fellow who showed up at the college would have his mother with him. <laughs> While I was packing, I tried to argue with her. It's ridiculous for you to go, I pleaded. You can't stay there and you'll have to go right back. I just want you to get straightened out, Ronald, darling. I couldn't argue too strongly because I was afraid she would change her mind at the last second and not let me go. <laughs> and besides, she changed the subject to t-shirts. She said that even if I wasn't going to be the richest boy in college, I'd have more t-shirts than anyone. It was true. I had plenty of t-shirts, but that had nothing to do with her coming with me. My father took us to the station. I waited downstairs with my luggage while he went to the garage. My mother came down wearing a full length fur coat and a veil over her face <laughs> and dyed blonde hair. When they see me in this outfit, they'll think we're so rich they won't even let you into the college. I thought she was overdressed. When my father pulled up in the car, we got in. My mother said, Ronald thinks I don't look enough like a mother. He was always that way. What did you always say when I came to school on Parents' Day in public school? I don't remember. Yes, you do, darling. He always used to ask me, why can't you look like the other mothers? Didn't you, Ronald? I suppose so. He was afraid I wasn't motherly looking enough. You should have been proud of me. My father wasn't listening. <laughs> his whole life now was his car. It was a new one and the first he'd ever owned. He had bought it with the money he had earned in the past two or three years. The same money he was using to send me to college. He had given my mother a little bundle of it, all rolled up and marked with a white wrapper, college money. <laughs> but as I said, his car was everything now. As he drove, he kept up a running commentary on his maneuvers. Each time he shifted a gear or turned a corner, he would explain elaborately, saying, my thoughts on that one were why take a chance in a three-way intercession. Or I handled it that way because there was a Pontiac passing me from behind. A porter took our bags at the station and my father first kissed my mother and then me goodbye. He told us both to write from college. <laughs> and he told me not to get too smart and too high class to suit him. Before he left, he asked the porter if he could make a U-turn in the station. The porter said he couldn't, and they got into a brief discussion of driving. The train was on time. There were bunches of young girls in cashmere sweaters and tight skirts, and I began to feel embarrassed about having my mother with me. She still had on the veil. <laughs> I think if she had taken off the veil, it wouldn't have been so bad. The porter took my mother and me to our seats, which seemed to be pretty far back in the train. Where's he going? I'll bet he thinks we're lovers or something. <laughs> she yelled to the porter. or something, do you? The porter laughed and said, could be, ma'am. You're a mighty young woman. My mother nudged me and winked. Well, for your information, this is my son. I'm a fast 30 years older than he is. Cut it out, mother. I'd been through this routine thousands of times. <laughs> Every time I went somewhere with my mother, we sat down. Well, it could be, you know. You don't think someone could take us for lovers? No. <laughs> and will you cut it out?
Some of the young girls began to drift into our car. It really hurt me to be there with my mother. <laughs> she caught me looking at them. Look, you don't have to worry about me being here. You want one of those girls, you just go right over there. Just like that, just go over there. Actually, I don't know what I would have done if I had been alone. Probably sat there just the same. But this way, I was marked as a fellow with a mother and there wasn't a chance. You get yourself a girl and I'll get myself a fella. Inside of two seconds, I bet I could get one. I know, I know you could. <laughs> In a little while, my mother asked the porter if the club car was open. When he said yes, she asked me to come back and have a drink with her. I said I'd rather wait, and she said, I never had to worry about one drink. If you have to worry about one drink, you're through. I brought up my children that way, and it's what I believe. We went back to the club car, <laughs> and my mother ordered whiskey sours for both of us. There were some college girls in tweed skirts sitting at the back of the car. One of them had a guitar and was strumming chords on it. I had the feeling they were staring at us when we came in. I drank my whiskey sour, and my mother caught me looking at the girls. Oh, I know your taste. I know it like a book. Show me a crowd of girls, and I'll pick out your father's taste and your taste. I don't have any taste. The girl with the guitar began strumming the Whiffin' Poof song, and the other girls sang the words. My mother ordered a second drink. You'll be hearing that from now on. Then she said she felt like dancing. <laughs> and got up and walked toward the girls. I was going to remain seated, but then I got up and followed her. My mother asked the girl with the guitar if she knew a rumba. The girl looked at the other girls, giggled a little, and began to play something with a Cuban beat. My mother began to clap her hands and shake her head as if listening for the beat. You've got it. You've got it. She tapped her feet and then broke out in a dance as if she had an imaginary partner throwing her out. Wherever I go, I get rumba. You got to give me credit for that. The train took a curve and threw her off the beat. And then a porter came out and said that dancing in the club car was against the rules. Well, dancing is, but that's not what I'm doing. I haven't moved my feet. That's not dancing. She got into an argument with the porter. One of the girls asked if she was my mother. <laughs> yes, I said. We were trying to figure out whether you were mother and son. Darlene guessed you were a theatrical act. <laughs> no, I said, we're mother and son. My mother told the porter to go get the head conductor, and they'd see about whether you were dancing if your feet weren't moving. I took my mother by the arm and asked her to come back with me to our car. Will you please cut it out, mother? I begged. I'm swaying, and he tells me I'm dancing. I like that. I got her back to the car, and we sat down in our seats. Well, I got a little rumba out of it, at least. What other mother that you know would do something like that? What was so important about doing a rumba on the train? I asked. She didn't hear me. If I really wanted to, I could have gotten that porter in trouble. That's a really new one. I'm swaying back and forth and he tells me I'm dancing. He probably thought you were dancing. I never heard of that. Even if I was dancing, he shouldn't have opened his mouth to me. A little later, the lights went out in the car and I went to sleep. In the morning, we had to switch over to another train, one that led right into the college town. We got a seat next to a shriveled up little lady who carried a cane. My mother asked where she was from, and the lady said, Boonville. 
which was the town around which the college was built. Watch this. I can make friends with the devil himself. <laughs> Housing for me was one of the things that had been a problem. I didn't know where I was going to live when I got to college. We had reservations at the hotel, but school was beginning in two days, and I had to have another place to live. My mother asked the woman about Boonville, and the woman said it was an awfully nice town, but that all of the out-of-town college people had a tendency to spoil it. My mother whispered to me, She doesn't like out-of-towners. Watch how I handle her. <laughs> that was one of my mother's habits. Whispering almost out loud in front of the person she was whispering about. <laughs> my mother asked the woman where she herself lived, and the woman said she lived alone with her unmarried daughter who worked for an insurance company. My mother asked if she had any room in her house, and the woman said it was a big house, but they never liked to take in borders. She doesn't take in borders. Well, I'll have her eating out of my hand. A man came around with sandwiches, and my mother bought some for us, and also one for the woman whose name was Mrs. Sloan. My mother told her some funny stories, and in a little while, the old woman was laughing and slapping her knee. Your mother is certainly a wire, she said to me. When the train stopped, she said to my mother, you stop around tonight at our house with your boy, and we'll get him fixed up with a room. My mother thanked her, and we parted at the station. You see how I handle them? She never had a laugh like that in her life. We checked into the Star Hotel, which we had been told was the best hotel in the college town. The receptionist was a pretty woman with one arm. She looked up our reservation and told us our room number. Then she asked whether we wanted single beds or a double. <laughs> Well, don't tell me you think this is my boyfriend. Oh, this is too good. This is something I just have to tell everybody. I just can't get over it. I mean, tell the truth. Tell the truth. You did think Ronald was my boyfriend, didn't you? Oh, the woman said, smiling. I guess I knew he was your son, all right. This is something I can't get over. How old do you think I am? If I told you how old I was, you'd probably faint. Oh, you're not as old as all that, the woman said. <laughs> the other woman clerks came over, and soon my mother had them all laughing hysterically. I sat down because I knew it would take a while for her to get finished. <laughs> the lobby was full of men who seemed to be there on business. All they talked about was the weather and highways. Now you go out there to 31, where it crosses 12, and you see a fork opposite the ham house. Get on 85. I felt very shaky and unsettled, and it seemed as though I would never actually get around to something like studying. My mother finally promised all the desk clerks bras, which are what my father manufactures. <laughs> and then we went upstairs in the elevator. How do you like the way I make friends everywhere I go? Two seconds longer, and they would have given me the whole hotel. I'd like to get unpacked so I can go over and register. The bellhop took us to our room. How do you like the way she asked us if we wanted a double bed? Don't you think she thought we were lovers? I mean, in all seriousness, she thought we were. I unpacked quickly. <laughs> Showered, got dressed, and told my mother I was going to the school to register. Outside, I still had the shaky feeling. I couldn't relax and felt smothered. As I filled out some forms, an older student invited me over to his house for a fraternity dance that evening. I told him I'd try to make it, and then I went back to the hotel. My mother had changed into a new dress. Do I have too much perfume on? It's pretty thick. Well, this particular brand seems thick, but it, but it settles quickly and, and in a little while, while you, you won't smell anything. It was getting on toward evening and it was dark outside. We had a dinner in the hotel and then my mother suggested we call on Mrs. Sloan so I could get settled with a place to live. We got a taxi cab and gave the driver Mrs. Sloan's address. As he drove through the small town, my mother said, It's funny, isn't it, how the very person 
person you don't think will be able to help you helps you. And that's why I say it's better not to leave a stone unturned. I'll talk to the devil himself if he'll help me out. The driver went out past the town and into the suburbs and past a miniature golf course. You wouldn't think that woman could ever laugh, and in two minutes I had her laughing. We came to a dark street with one house at the end of it. <laughs> the lights were on and the driver said, this is it. We got out of the cab and the lights in the house went out. My mother and I went up to the entrance and rang the bell. No one answered. A son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's get out of here. The cab hadn't left, and we took it back to the hotel. It wasn't her. I'll bet you a thousand dollars it wasn't her, and, and it was her daughter. A lot of good it does me. I could have had her eating out of my hand. I didn't meet her daughter, so I couldn't cope with her. At the hotel, my mother asked me to come in and have a drink. It'll make you feel better. I told her I didn't want a drink. I, I wanted to go up and read. She said, all right, and she'd be up in a little while. I went upstairs and sat on the bed. Then I read for a while. After about an hour, I came down and went into the bar where my mother was. There was a jukebox on, and she was swaying to the music with her head held back as if she were carried away. Look at my feet, she said to the bartender. What am I doing, swaying or dancing? I uh, can't really say, the bartender said. Swaying, dancing, anything you say. We had a louse on the train who couldn't stand dancing. The world could come to an end and he still wouldn't want you to dance. The ridiculous part of it was I wasn't dancing. I was just swaying, just like I am now. Right, Ronald? I always sway. <laughs> My son will bear me out. Even here, where you don't care about dancing, what am I doing? Swaying. <laughs> I told my mother I thought I'd like to go over to the clubhouse dance, to which the older student had invited me. All right, you can go later. I want you to meet my fella. She put her arm around the bartender. <laughs> I'll bet you'd never believe he was my fella. The bartender eased away, laughing. Oh, now he doesn't want to be my fella. Two seconds ago, what were you crooning in my ear? The bartender laughed and looked at me. Those little white lies. You should hear him sing. He doesn't know the words, but he loves to sing. He was singing in my ear. My mother asked me if I wanted a drink, and I said I didn't, but I'd really like to go to that clubhouse. If they really like you, you can live there. You don't have to stay with a Mrs. Sloan. Okay. Goodbye. She said to the bartender. We went upstairs in the elevator. He's cute, isn't he? He's just a guy. I, I didn't see anything special about him. Inside the room, my mother opened her closet and asked me what I thought she should wear. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't go with me. You generally like me in something tailored, don't you? I don't care what you wear. I really mean it, though. I don't think you should go. When you talk stupidly, I can't talk to you. There'll be a thousand mothers there. No, there won't be. I, if, I, if I come with my mother, they're liable to think I'm a jerk. They don't want to meet you. They invited me. I'll go there for two seconds altogether. If you're afraid I'm going to stay there and cramp your style, you're wrong. I'll stay there for just two seconds. She went into the bathroom to change. When she came out, I said, I don't want you to go, mother. And we had an argument. I told her I knew why she was sending me to college, that it was to make up for the way she treated me as a child. I told her I remembered the woman she'd hired to take care of me when she went off with her girlfriend for weeks and months at a time. I told her that once my friend Gordon had come to the house and she'd been lying there in a slip and ordering me to bring her things. And Gordon had asked me later, what is she to you anyway, stepmother? She said that there'd never been the closeness between us that there had been between her and my sister. You've always had an ugly streak in you. Your sister never had. 
I told her about the country and how she'd sent me down each evening to steal a red rose for her hair and how I hated it and how much it embarrassed me. As I shouted at her, all the shakiness went out of me and I felt much better. Soon I was arguing all alone, feeling very good, bringing up things I'd forgotten all about, how she'd embarrassed me by making me sing on the stage, how she tormented me by waking me up to entertain for company in the middle of the night, how she and my sister would get together and embarrass me about girlfriends. Some of the things I brought up were almost a little nostalgic. And my mother was sitting back now, not angry, but a little amazed at how I could remember all these things. And then I told her about the time she had brought a band leader into our hotel room in Wisconsin one summer and turned on the sink water and thought I was sleeping. I was awake, I said, smiling a little. I wasn't sleeping. My mother's nose got very fat all of a sudden and her face became contorted. She started to cry. And I said to her, I didn't mean that one. She cried for a long time. And then she opened her purse and took out the bills that had been lying on the Frigidaire at home the night before, marked college money. She said it was to pay for college and that she was leaving the next morning. Then she went downstairs to the bar. I stuck around in the room and fell asleep. And the next morning, just as she promised, she kissed me goodbye, got into a taxi cab in front of the hotel, and left me to begin my first year of college. <laughs>